All right, guys, we got uh, breaking news, I guess you can say. The Iowa caucus results are in, at least somewhat. Unsurprisingly, Donald Trump has won. Not only did he win, he won in record time. It was not even 30 minutes after the polls closed that uh, all of the various media outlets called it in favor of Trump. Uh, more on that in a little bit, because there's actually some controversy around just how quick they called it. Uh, but the numbers that we have at the moment, with about 39% of the vote in, we have Trump at 53%, DeSantis at 20%, Nikki at 19%, and Vivek at 8%. Now, that's the numbers as of right now. When you project out the votes that are not in yet, they can look at the trends and determine what they think it's going to be at and get pretty close to a, a solid idea of that. They think, the New York Times thinks, ultimately it's going to end up at 51% for Trump, 20% for Ron DeSantis, 19% for Nikki Haley, and 8% for Vivek Ramaswamy. Um, allow me to say, Crystal, right off the bat here, I have to give you a lot of credit because you were more bullish on Trump than I was. Mm -hmm. And uh, that it looks like that's going to end up being the case. So I want to tell everybody what my final prediction was. I'm pulling it up right now. Okay, I said Trump 42, DeSantis 23, Haley 21, and Vivek, 10. Uh, now, and I said the other freaks get 4%. Mm. Now, to be <laughs> fair to me, I'm actually pretty close. I'm, um, I'm definitely in the ballpark as far as DeSantis and Haley go. Yeah. Um, in fact, I almost totally nailed it. They're going to end up with a little bit less than what I thought, but 20% for DeSantis, 19% for Haley. By the way, that's subject to change. It could be a dead tie. It could be that one clips the other by one point or two point, but right now it's tilting in favor of DeSantis, which is they what I ultimately thought would happen. just updated it to switch it and make it so now it's Haley. towards Nikki. So it just shows you like, and this is still with only 40% of the vote in, it mm -hmm. could definitely go either way for, for them in terms of the second place for what that's worth. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'd be interested to see, and people are saying, you know, hey, if Trump gets over 50%, that's a real sign, like, wrap it up, it's done. Um, I don't yeah. think that's unfair. I think that's fair. Saying more than half of the Republicans who are voting are saying they want you, that means even if it was a head-to-head -head race against one of the other candidates, You're he still would winning. still win. That's so, I mean, I, I, I actually think that's kind of fair. Um, ultimately, I'll be curious to see if he does dip under that 50% line. Because like I said, I had them all the way at 42%. You said you thought more like 48%. I think you might actually get it almost exactly right at the end. Right now they have the New York Times projection has them getting 51%. And so we'll see. Um, but I mean, I was just basing off of that uh, Des Moines Register seltzer uh, poll. Seltzer. Which, yeah, and seltzer. <laughs> I love me some seltzer. <laughs> <laughs> which is like, you know, famously relatively accurate or the most accurate of the Iowa caucus polls. Not that it can't be off by a bit as well. They had him coming in at 48%. And what was interesting with their poll is they had Nikki getting second. But then Ann Seltzer herself gave all these quotes like, eh, I'm not sure if there's the kitty. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure that that's actually going to work out because her, she said that her support is jaw dropping how not enthusiastic Nikki Haley supporters were. And so when you looked at the fact that, okay, you're going to have this terrible weather and, you know, horrible conditions or her people who are really like not excited about her going to come out and brave the weather. And so if DeSantis is able to pull off that second place position, which is still very much in doubt at this point, I think that would be a good reason why. But, you know, ultimately her poll looks like it's tracking very closely with the outcome as it's going to come out here. I think it also had Vivek Ramaswamy at 7%, which is where exactly where he's projected to end up as well. Yeah, it, they have him projected at 7? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, because I thought he was going to slightly outperform the polls, like, like I was saying earlier. Um, that'll be interesting to see. The other freaks... Who I had a four percent. They're actually the massive underperformers. Some random guy named like Blinky or something like Ryan, that. Ryan. And then Blinky. Asa Hutchinson, who literally Binkley. got Binkley. There we Binkley. go. Binkley, hilarious. <laughs> Asa Hutchinson got fewer votes than if you or I sent out a tweet yesterday and said, "Please caucus for us at the Iowa caucus." Homie got like forty something votes. It's the saddest showing I've ever seen. So they actually underperformed the most. Um, listen to this. I found this point very interesting. Yeah. Depending on the final results, we could be headed to a best case scenario for Trump in Iowa. He gets a historic blowout. That's already the case no matter what, even if he drops tremendously from where he is. Yeah. DeSantis narrowly gets second, which is the most likely scenario, or, you know, 50-50, they might be, like, dead tied. Yeah. Stepping on Haley momentum. Yeah. And Haley is slightly better than expected, 
denying DeSantis any momentum, yeah. but she still gets third. Yeah. So that looks like what's unfolding. I I agree with that assessment that this is basically like the best possible outcome for Trump. Because if you had someone who, I mean, listen, it, it has been for a while now, the writing has been on the wall that Donald Trump is once again going to be the Republican nominee, barring something outside of normal electoral processes. But if you were going to make the case for someone else, you would say, okay, they need to come in a strong, clear second. Everybody else basically needs to drop out. You have some sort of head to head. You have some sort of secret group of voters out there looking for permission to break with Donald Trump. And this result is the signal that they need that it's safe to come over to Nikki Haley or to come over to Ron DeSantis or whatever. If you've got the two of them coming in 20%, one's 20, one's 19, one's 20, one's 21, whatever, they're probably both stay in the race. Oh, they're definitely both staying for New Hampshire. Nikki doesn't. Nikki is definitely staying for New Hampshire. Ron DeSantis, I don't know. I could see him oh, dropping I think he after will. Iowa. No, I, I think he's staying in. I think you're right, but I could see it because he's, he staked his whole campaign on this state. Mm -hmm. And for you to be struggling in a battle with Nikki Haley, like this is not where he thought his campaign was going to be at this point. So I could see him going. I don't know. But yeah, it is kind of a best of all worlds for Donald Trump. And then even if, let's say Nikki pulls off some miracle in New Hampshire, surpasses the polls there, and is able to beat Donald Trump in New Hampshire, which I seriously doubt, especially since she even lost among college-educated voters to him in Iowa, which is like her bread and butter. But anyway, even if she pulls off that miracle, like, where else is she going to win? That's it. There are no other states that it looks like Nikki even has a shot, including her own home state of South Carolina, so... I don't know. This so, thing may be over before it's begun. So as we're talking, we just got a giant vote dump that came in. Yeah. 71.6% of votes now in. Trump, 51.3%. Ron DeSantis, 21%. Nikki Haley, 18.9%. Oh, Vivek, 7.7%. Okay. Yep. And let me see if it changed their projections at all down here. Now they've got DeSantis DeSantis back. winning by two points over at Haley. second place. And winning, Trump at 51. Winning second place. And R Ramaswamy at eight, which is... That makes you happy because you want him to... I said he's going to slightly overperform the polls. <laughs> he is, right? Well, I guess it's sort of right in the middle of it. But, um, so, no, Lyle... Oh, look at this. And now they have Haley only 10% chance of second, get second place. Yeah. Because they're now, doing that goofy noodle, needle thing. Yeah, it's so stupid. Place, to be fair to Haley, she was not performing well in the polls in Iowa at all until like this week. Yeah. She, in fact, there was a time Christie was beating her at one point in the polls in Iowa. Of course, he dropped out. But New Hampshire, she's actually polling very well. She's in one poll four points down to Trump and another one nine points down to Trump. And DeSantis is nowheresville in New Hampshire. So like you said, he staked all of his, his campaign on Iowa. Uh, so it'll be interesting. I think he is staying in. He's doing like a CNN town hall with Wolf Blitzer tomorrow. He's got like all these things lined up. So I think he, he's going to stay mean, in he's it. he's getting second. I think he'll definitely stay in it. Uh, one thing I want to say about Nikki and the way this is, um, sh is shaking out for her, even though she was very gentle in her criticisms of Donald Trump, the Republican base has come to see her increasingly almost like a Chris Christie kind of figure. Which is hilarious. It just shows how like non-policy driven, non-ideological these voters are. Yes. It's just like cult of Trump type stuff. If you actually write down on paper, Nikki Haley is more conservative than Donald Trump on the actual issues. That is very true. That is very true. But um, so... Her favorability ratings have been really falling. You know, she did very poorly. A majority of voters, according to the NBC Endurance poll, were actually self-identified as very conservative. And she got 6% of them. I mean, doing very poorly with very conservative voters. Doing very poorly with even those who say they're somewhat conservative. The only people she really performed with were the self-identified moderates and the like 2% who describe themselves as liberals. And that's just not a way to win a Republican primary. Like, that's just not going to work out if you're depending on non-Republicans to pull you across the finish line. So the bottom line is Republicans support Trump and they still support Trump. They still love Trump. None of these candidates were able to make or even really attempted to make a compelling case for why voters should move on. From Donald Trump, you know, Vivek's doing this goofy like vote for me to save Trump. Like that doesn't make any, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. So, <laughs> so uh, I think that's kind of the bottom line here is that the only person who even tried to make an actual case against Trump is Chris Christie, and we saw how well that worked out for him. So I have to read you this tweet because I got a nice chuckle out of this. Okay. Jonathan Martin, uh, who's with Politico, said the following: "I'm seeing some monster Nikki numbers from Des Moines." 
Des Moines precinct south of Grand, the swankiest part of town, that evoke what Alice Roosevelt Longworth said about Wendell Wilkie, that's a candidate who ran way back in the day, uh, against FDR. <laughs> Nikki's Haley quote, Nikki Haley's candidacy, quote, sprang from the grassroots of a thousand country clubs. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of, that's so cool. True. Um, <laughs> all right, so now let's talk about this. I thought this was interesting. So I saw the DeSantis people come out they called the race for Trump within like 30 minutes. Yeah. It was literally, it was like that. Um, now, in defense of that, they could say, hey, based on our analytics and our projections, there's literally no way he's going to lose. So there is an argument to, to say that. On the other hand, the point that the DeSantis people were making is that there were literally people still in line who hadn't had the opportunity to caucus yet, who were like getting notifications on their phone that said Donald Trump won. Right. And then that can then impact those people to say, well, fuck it. What am I, I'm not yeah, going to wait well, in line. I'm going to get out of here. This is stupid. And then somebody pointed out, I thought this was a really good point. I'm sure this guy's like a DeSantis stand, but this is actually a good point. The AP's own rules, the Associated Press's own rules forbid calling a race before polls close. Tonight, the AP called the Iowa caucuses for Trump before some precincts even began voting. Wow. So I see a lot of people and, and definitely a lot of lefties like making fun of uh, the DeSantis people and basically being like, you know, basically like sour grapes. Oh, wow. They called it this early. So instead of losing by, you know, 27 points, you lost by 29 points or whatever. It's like, OK, but if that was my candidate and before I even got the chance to have my voice heard, they're calling it, which is in effect suppressing others who might be online to vote yeah. for my candidate. That's just not right as a matter of principle. I agree. I, I totally agree with that. And that was my instant reaction as well. I mean, even when it was called, I was very surprised they called it so early because we were watching, unfortunately, CNN. And you could see candidates were still making speeches. Like, the caucus process was still very much ongoing. Yeah. And so for them to go ahead and say, oh, it's over, Trump won. I mean, clearly he there was no other candidate with a path. But it still seemed really unfair and just as a matter of principle, like not the right thing to do and obviously in violation of their own standards and guidelines. But all of the news agencies did. It wasn't just the AP. It was NBC. It was CNN. They all, CBS, they all. Um, they rushed to it. They, they were all like, just jumped call it. right on it. And maybe it was once they saw one go, it was like, ah, oh, well, shit, if they're going to do it, I guess we're going to do it, too. Yeah, uh, that's, I think that's exactly what happened. So now let's get to some of the, the entrance polls, which I found really interesting. Mm -hmm. they, uh, the voters were asked, is Trump fit for the presidency if he's convicted of a crime? 63% said yes. Now, by the way, I just want to point out that the, the number on the poll kept changing because I think the more people kept going in, they kept updating the number and updating the percentage. Yeah. So I've seen that range within five points, both up and down. Yeah. But it's about 63% that said if Trump is convicted of a crime, he's still fit for the presidency, mm -hmm. which is an astounding number. But also at the same time, that's like saying about 40% of the Republican Party even says if he's convicted of a crime, I'm not going to vote for him. True. You know, so that cuts both ways. It's like amazing in so far as this proves he's going to win the Republican primary, but also amazing in that it sort of proves it's really, really difficult for him to win a general election if he gets convicted, which looks very likely by the day. I don't put that much stock in these in any poll that asks people to predict how they will react to some theoretical event in the future. Because I just don't think that people are that good at predicting how they will react to some theoretical event in the future. My guess is if Trump is convicted of a crime, like let's say on the documents case, I think the number of Republicans that hang with him and actually vote for him is going to be a lot higher than 63%. That would be my guess. But even if it's higher than 63%, I do think it would make it difficult for him to beat even a half-dead, genocide-inducing Joe Biden. I don't know. <laughs> At this point, I just don't know. I, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. The polls do seem to indicate that, but I just can't say anything for sure anymore, especially given how Biden has been just horrendous and made everyone hate him and like, you know, the people who they most need to turn out, young voters, um, Arab Americans in Michigan, whatever, just absolutely despise him for sponsoring a genocide. So I just don't know at this point. I just think convicted felon versus old guy with dementia who everybody hates. I think old guy with dementia who everybody hates probably beats convicted felon. But I think that is literally the only person that old guy with dementia who's inducing a genocide can beat. 
Mm-hmm. I really think that, like, in other words, if it was Nikki Haley, if it was Ron DeSantis, shit. If it was Asa Hutchinson mm-hmm. up against Biden, you don't even need to have the election. Biden's yeah. going to get draxed. Well, Asa is, you know, the, the theoretical, like, generic Republican. He'd probably do fantastic. He would. He would crush <laughs> Biden. He would crush Biden. All right, so then uh, let me give you this one. Are you okay. part of the MAGA movement? 53% of the voters said yes. Um, and then, I, wait, what does it say? 62% said So between 53 and 62% said yes. I think it changed think the more the, the time went on poll chain. That was that uh, NBC had a higher number. Oh, that's that right. That's right. That's right. And CNN had 53%. 53%. Okay. Yeah. And you made a good point. You said people, it, that doesn't necessarily mean they're voting for Trump. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting because my thought was if they're MAGA, of course they're voting for Trump. But then they showed a poll and it was like, no, actually, what was it? 70 something percent said, I, I vote for Trump and I'm MAGA. Then... Double digits percent voted for DeSantis some and said I'm MAGA. Yeah, some, some voted for Vivek. Voted and, for Vivek. Right. Yeah, I mean, six, to me, I was actually surprised. The 53% number surprised me a little bit. I thought it'd be higher than that. 62% is more in line with what I would expect. But yeah, I mean, people interpret that in a lot of different ways. And Vivek in particular tried to wrap himself in like, you know, I'm like the next part of MAGA and MAGA is not just about Donald Trump. And so, you know, I'm like the, the new version of a MAGA 2.0 or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you had two candidates making that argument, DeSantis and Vivek to differing degrees made a similar argument Mm -hmm. to that. Yeah, exactly. They asked, did Biden win? Only 28% of Iowa Republicans said yes. Scary. Yeah. I think, uh, they asked that as well to specific, uh, people who supported candidates. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like, an overwhelming majority of the people who voted for Nikki said yes. They Biden, won. Biden won. Yeah. Um, That's ban, a scary number. Ban, that is a very scary number. Ban all or most abortions. 60% say yes to that. I was very, like, religious conservative kind of a state. It really so is. So it doesn't yeah. surprise me. But, I mean, on the other hand, I guess you could say that in a Republican primary, to have it, quote, only be 60% is not as high as I think it would have been in previous years. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean... I, I think this is the most conservative number you're going to get in the entire country, even among groups of Republicans, you know, because we saw in Missouri and Kansas and a bunch of places that are very red, the people voted to keep abortion rights. Yeah, well, you if know? you think about it, if you've got 40 percent of Republicans even who would be, you know, theoretically voting for abortion rights and then you add an overwhelming majority of independents and an even more overwhelming majority of Democrats. That's where you get the number. You've yeah. got a pro-choice mm-hmm. majority even in a state like Iowa. Um. So they asked the voters their most important issue. The biggest number was 37% said immigration. The second biggest number, I think it was 36% said the economy. But I found that really interesting, that in Iowa, immigration is the number one issue to them. I mean, it's it's illogical, but it's also tracks with history where it's like, you know, at times of chaos where people feel uncertain and, you know, whatever. Minorities. Here's a scapegoat. Here you go. Here's the people that are to blame. It's ridiculous. In a state where, and in this caucus, I looked at the demographic numbers and there, it was like literally 100% white people. (laughs) Yeah. It said like not enough or didn't, did not, did not apply or something when you looked at the minority. I mean, it's a white state. And then when you talk about the Republican party, it's even more overwhelming. So anyway, I don't think immigrants are the the real problems that they're facing there. All right. Now I want to get to the last two things in a second, but first give me an, can we get a, an update? Do we have any more Numbers that came in. Um, do we have more numbers? Let so we see. were at 76% before. Now, now we're, we're at 85%. Trump's at 51. So he came down a touch. Meatball Ron, 21.2. Okay, uh, solid. Nikki Haley, 19.1. Okay. Vivek, 7.7. And in terms of the projections, we've got Trump, 51. DeSantis, 21. Haley, 19. Ramaswamy, 8. And... DeSantis, they now have like very likely DeSantis certainly. to beat Nikki Haley. Gonna yeah. beat Nikki for the the second place slot. So hey man, between you and me, <laughs> between you and me with our predictions, if you yeah. put our predictions together, we absolutely freaked it. I we because you said forty eight percent for Trump. I was wrong. I said forty two. It was much higher than forty two. But I said DeSantis twenty three, Haley twenty one. That's almost dead on. Yeah. And I said Vivek ten eight. I mean, not bad. So on on the projections, not bad at all. I mean, you and I have to brainstorm before every one of these things and then mesh our ideas together and then we'll almost certainly get the truth. So that's what <laughs> we should do. Is that the way that works? That is the way that works. That's actually science. All right, so final thing I wanted to bring up is that they were showing some of the caucus places on CNN mm-hmm. and they would like listen in as they were like doing the caucus-y stuff. 
And <laughs> at the beginning, um, in multiple places, they started the night with a prayer. Yeah. Everybody said a prayer yeah. together. You and then they that. go to the Pledge of Allegiance. You love those things. And I'm looking at this like, first of all, I didn't, how is this even legal? Right? Like you're having an election, which is like democracy of all of the citizens. Mm -hmm. You're saying a fucking prayer. What if there's, you know, it's Iowa, so it ain't going to be many. What if it's 1% is, is Muslim or 0.5% are Hindu or 7% are non-religious? They got to sit there and do a fucking prayer? I mean. Like, what are you talking about? Even one of the candidates, Vivek, is Hindu. So, yeah, and you're fucking saying a prayer and doing the Pledge of Allegiance like we're in fourth grade? The pledge what are you talking about? It's a staple of many political events I've been to, so that's just sort of like par for the course. But the uh, the prayer thing is is doesn't seem right. Doesn't no, seem I'll right. go further. Even the Pledge of Allegiance shit, it's weird. But I also have to say, like, I, I mean, the whole caucus process is really stupid and inaccessible. I mean... To have to go at this one particular time, you know, if you have to work at that time, forget it, you're screwed. They don't have, it's not like you can send in a mail-in ballot. There mm. are no other options but to show up at this one place at this <laughs> in, one time. In negative 27 degree weather. Yeah, and if you <laughs> don't have childcare or you're sick or whatever happens, because shit happens in real life, like that's it. You don't get to participate. So it is ridiculous antiquated stupid system you know uh, uh, separate and apart from also them forcing you to engage in some religious ritual that you, you may or may not believe in the final thing you were watching this with me cnn interviewed two like 20 something year old women um and we're asking them who they support and basically one of them says like uh ron DeSantis, because i don't know i trust my family and they seem to like him yeah. And the other one was like the friend and was like, yeah, Ron DeSantis because her family likes them. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm looking at this and I'm like, is democracy a mistake? <laughs> like, is it actually a mistake? Like, what the fuck are we doing here? They were... I, I'm, I'm astonished. Like, it's one thing to, to think about policy and use that to determine how you vote to like a slightly lesser degree than somebody like me who almost mm -hmm. totally prioritizes policy. Yeah. Right. It's another thing when you're like, yeah, I don't know. Dave told me he sort of likes this guy. So now I'm going to take two hours out of my night to drive in negative 27 degree <laughs> weather to go caucus for him. Like, and, and by the way, they seem like just dead eyed, brain dead. Like they barely know where they are type people. And I'm looking at this like, oh my God. When she was, when she was pressed, I'm like, well, what, what did they say that made you feel like this might be the guy? She was like, I mean, I, I feel like I like how he speaks. I'm like, you do? Really? <laughs> and then there was that family they talked to. The second they put that dude on screen, you were like, he's a Trump supporter. Yeah. And I, I looked and I was like, oh yeah, he's a Trump supporter. And they talked to him. Not the stereotype, but I was right. <laughs> and so I'd say the dad is like 60 something years old. And then he has a kid who's like maybe 27. Right. And then yeah. the kid has a kid. Yeah. Who's like, what, four, would you say? Five, maybe? Somewhere in there. Yeah. yeah. Maybe and, a little older. And, like, the, the one who's in his 20s is wearing, like, a Make America Great Again hat. And they interviewed him, and it was just like, I'm here. Make America Great Again. Well, and they, they asked. She said, by the way, I called the Trump sort of supporter before they showed the dude with right, the yeah, MAGA hat. Did. So mm -hmm. I didn't have that, that uh, you know, giveaway right off the bat. But they asked. They said, okay, so is this a whole Trump family, I'm assuming? And it was the kid, the five-year-old or whatever, nodded his head and was like, yeah. I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's messy, man. Yeah. It's so I will, messy. Uh, just one other little nugget from the entrance polls. Trump did the best among the oldest voters and the worst among the youngest voters. And uh, um, who, Vivek was the polar opposite. Vivek did the best among the youngest, but he was in the, like twenty some percentage points among young voters. But it was like the youngest age group made up, made up only ten percent of caucus goers. So that's not really the age group that you really want to have backing you, given their voting percentage. Trump also won among college educated and not college educated. Mm -hmm. He pretty much like swept most most demographics. He did win those with advanced degrees. Advanced so degrees. So the PhDs yeah. went for Nikki Haley. <laughs> <laughs> anyway um yeah so there you go guys that's the breakdown um can't say anything is too surprising other than the fact that 
if if we wanted to say Trump had an iron grip on the party, which was the correct thing to say beforehand, now it's sort of undeniable. Yeah. I'm very curious to see when when's New Hampshire? When's the New Hampshire election? Next week. Next week. That's going to be more interesting to me because does this give him momentum in a weird way, where now he ends up winning there by a bigger margin? You know, it's like. My it's my guess, although sometimes New Hampshire likes to be like a rebuke, you know, to Iowa. They like to yeah. be sort of like contrarian. And, and so. we should point out, in Iowa, historically, in, in modern history, they don't usually pick winners. I think it's a different case this time around for very yeah. obvious reasons. Yeah. But historically, on the Republican side, they did. They picked Rick Santorum. They picked Mike Huckabee. Uh, they picked a number of people who kind of went belly up rather quickly. I think it's different this time, but I just wanted to point that out. Cause I think it's interesting that Iowa has their own, also their own unique sort of thing. Yeah, and New Hampshire famously, lots of independents vote. Um, Democrats have decided, you know, they didn't want New Hampshire to go first in terms of primary, but New Hampshire's still going ahead, but Joe Biden's a write-in, so there's like less energy on the Democratic side, so maybe more people vote in the Republican primary, I don't know. But, so I guess that could go either way, but Nikki would still, that's her strongest state. She has she to win it. She still have to outperform the polls and by she needs quite to win a bit. It. And she needs to win In it. order to win. And if you don't win, like, I mean, I think this thing is going to be done and dusted in like a week, to be honest with you. I mean, it certainly looks like that. If DeSantis and Haley don't figure out which one it's going to be, yeah, that just makes it literally impossible for anybody else to even theoretically have a chance. Yeah. You know? So, anyway, there you have it. Ace Hutchinson is going to make a comeback. Hear me now. We'll be later. <laughs>